Hi, hello, good morning. I, I have to show you this, I have to. In this extract from Deborah Spark's 2005 Curious Attractions Essays on Fiction Writing, Spark attempts to uncover how stories are born, their origin, their triggers, what sparks them, pun intended. Jokes aside, Spark suggests that triggers are often alike in form. She goes on to dissect a few methods of how writers actually obtain triggers and offers suggestions for how to act on these and subsequently build a compelling narrative. Now, there are several key conclusions to draw from Spark's text. We'll start with the fact that not everybody has the curiosity to act on triggers that others may. People have unique interests, that's the beauty of diversity. Spark suggests that writers should identify what attracts or compels them, seeking out triggers within activities in which they have a genuine interest. This advice may be useful for writers struggling to find inspiration or wanting to expand on an idea that they already have. To that end, Spark also notes that everyday experiences can induce creative intervention. She quotes Raina Maria Rilke who states that if everyday life seems poor, don't blame it. Blame yourself. Admit to yourself that you are not enough of a poet to call forth its riches. Now, once again, this notion may apply to future creative texts from upcoming writers or even pre-existing literature. Writing from personal experience may give an author greater insight into where their text may be headed, enriching the reader's experience. So applying this in a contemporary setting, this is evident in many texts that are based on real life events, such as James Wan's The Conjuring or, or Emma Donoghue's Room. No, 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 there's a catch. Spark warns that reality can hamper imagination. Focusing on excessive and sometimes overwhelming details may be distracting for writers and even hinder their creativity. In other words, the truth underlying an experience may be no good for the story. Spark invites writers to disconnect themselves from reality and even suggests a variety of exercises that may help them do that by generating a natural flow of creative ideas. All these exercises revolve around the principle of overlooking what is worthless and being discerning in the perspectives and perceptions that an author includes in their writing. This technique of shutting down one's censor and relying on whatever comes to mind is evident in most fantasy works such as J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series or Suzanne Collins' The Hunger Games trilogy. Now, while the authors obviously may not be writing from their personal experience, they've developed their respective storylines by inventing, selecting, and piecing together situations that align with how they believe their characters would perceive and interact with the world. Another conclusion evident within Spock's excerpt is that a writer does not necessarily have to know how their story is going to progress and eventually finish. In fact, Spock suggests that this is counterproductive as it has the potential to impede creativity entirely. She, along with myself, is a passionate advocate for allowing ideas to flow onto the page naturally. So, in a real life context, one important takeaway from Spark is that for writers seeking to create and develop stories, planning may actually serve as a hindrance rather than a beneficial practice. One notable example of this from pop culture is Stephanie Meyer's Twilight series, which was actually born from a vivid dream that she had and required little to no planning beforehand. That is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys have enjoyed my analysis and I'll see you in the next video. For now, I'm off to go put all this into practice and write another novel. Until next time.